This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. Happy New Year! Yeah, it's like crackling when you shout, so maybe just keep the one tone and then... It's been hard work getting you on today. I think, I don't know whether you can't be bothered anymore or you're getting old or you're just too busy for me. I don't know, but it's been a struggle today, this morning. Number one, number one, that's what I always say to you. Uh, number two, it's been hard work because um, um, because you were telling me that that I look my head, my head looked like a peanut as I was setting this up. We spent half an hour messing about with this thing. I even got one of those ring stands with a light on for my daughters. So it just made me look just wrong. So so now we're here. We're on. We're in. We're good. Uh, this is I, I'll give this a seven out of ten. It's not bad. Not bad for your setup at the moment. You got any New Year's resolutions? No. Any? I don't believe in all that. Uh, I don't think I'll last till the end of January, though. Well, what were they? I'm going to stop using the F word. I can use any other word apart what, from the F word. What F word? What word? Because. No, what word? So I was watching. I ain't, you ain't catching my heart. So I seen this film. What was it called? Uh, Baptiste. Baptiste. It was a follow-on from The Missing. So this character, he came across as really respectful and everything. And then he uh, started swearing. I'm like thinking, nah, I ain't feeling it now. I thought, well, what do you expect? And then I remember when I did my book, the ghostwriter, he swore a lot. And he put a lot of swearing in it. And I gave it to Brendan. And Brendan said, he said, uh, take the swearing out, John. It's not you. I took the swearing out. It's me. I don't swear. It's just that when I come across people like you, I start just getting a bit emotionally invested in the conversation. So now I don't swear. I'm done with that. All right. I don't use the F word. I can use other words like, like bastard or blood clot, but I can't use even one. I think they're worse. No, they're not. Because most people don't know what they mean. Yeah, but that doesn't, you're just taking the context out of it. Okay. Okay, anyway, uh, Happy New Year. Thanks, Steve. Thanks. Can you still say that on the 20th of January? I don't know. But anyway, Happy New Year anyway. Let me just tell you, you are the first interview I have done this year. Shut the up. First interview. I just locked up. I said, no, no. All right. Cool, give us in it, boy. The first interview I've done all year. And they've been on it, you know. They have. Enough people. Yo, yo, yo. I've just said, no, nah, I'm just having the rest for a while. I think people associate you more with our channel now. So I think it's a case of they think, what's the point? Employed by you, company man Nelson. <laughs> I, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. <laughs> um, first of all, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Everything's good. There's a storm of brewing outside, um, uh, weather wise. Uh, nice to hear Eddie, Eddie announce um, some dates for us all, which is really, really good. You know what? Again, I'm going to get it on here. Again, I commend him uh, for uh, giving hope and putting some dates out there, putting some fights out there, giving us to think, right, there's something to look forward to. Obviously, there's all the speculation about uh, Fury, Joshua, uh, where it'll be, if it will be, how close it's getting done. Uh, but obviously, we'll talk about those as it goes on. But good. Right, we, we're back in a... We're looking healthy again. We're, 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 we're wading through. Absolutely. We're obviously in a month here, January, where boxing wasn't allowed to commence, which uh, in, the, in the scheme of things seems a good idea in the kind mm. of current pandemic situation, obviously, we're still in. So boxing will resume in a closed doors capacity in the middle of February. Eddie Hearns announced uh, a string of shows running to the 10th mm. of April. We'll talk about them shows. Um, and also, yeah, Frank Warren's announced uh, Carl Frampton against Jamel Herring. So... Mm. Boxing is slowly coming back. No fans yet, but it's better than not having boxing. Yeah, without, without a doubt. And so uh, it's just it's, it's just good news. And plus, there's not many great things to look forward to, obviously, with the world how it is at the moment. So uh, uh, in our sport, the way it is, I think it just brings a bit of joy to people's lives. So uh, good on. Okay, before, uh, before we kind of run through the schedules, you can tell me what fights you're looking forward to uh, in that uh, couple of months. <coughs> um, yeah. A report suggests that Deontay Wilder is in talks with Charles Martin for a fight. I, don't I, heard, know. I, I heard that. So, so does that, that tells me negotiations with, with a third clash with um, 
uh, Titan Fury are, uh, are off the table or they're out of the mix or they might have nudged one or two things where uh, he may wait to see what happens with a winner or he might just have to get in the queue like everybody else. But Charles Martin, um, um, good, good on him. Good, you know, Charles Martin's getting in there against a former world champion, uh, one of the biggest bangers I've ever seen in our sport. So um, I think it'd be, it's good just to just to see where he stands and how he performs and how he is with, with Charles Martin. Charles Martin is itching to try and get back into the big time after getting turned over by Anthony Joshua, uh, which I understand. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, good, good, good on him. Um, I think uh, Deontay Wilder is better off doing the talking in the ring with the gloves on rather than, than anything else because he seems to drop his... Drop, drop a clang. I've got, I've heard something. You tell me if it's true or not. And this is just rumours. I've heard Shelley Shelley Finkel split. Um, as far as I know, they haven't. I think Shelley Finkel had uh, come out recently and uh, denied those suggestions that him and uh, Deontay Wilder have split. Because um, Shelley Finkel was the one I think that confirmed Charles Martin as one of several names in contention for Deontay Wilder's return. And these names are out there if, according to reports, if they're not able to secure the Tyson Fury tri trilogy uh, in the arbitration that they're involved with at the moment. So that's... Well, well, that kind of tells me, if you're looking at a plan B, if that tells me, if you're looking at a plan B, it means plan A is looking rather shaky or, or there's a good chance plan A won't happen if they start to do this because if you're in negotiations, you don't talk about your options. You talk about actually dealing what you're negotiating. So that kind of tells me that uh, that fight, it tells me a lot them even talking about somebody else uh, because it's not, it's not good. That's not how you negotiate. That's not how you get the hustle on. You make out as though that's all you want. So, um, uh, but yeah, it, it's good either way. It is good. And uh, it'd be nice to see the Auntie Wilder <clears throat> back in the ring and see how he handles the pressure, see how he handles the, the media, see how he, how, he, uh, um, how that, that, that crushing defeat has affected him um, uh, mentally. Or if it has. You've gone on record as saying you doubted whether we'd see him in the ring again. Yep. But what, have you changed your stance on that? Not at all. We ain't seen him in the ring yet. Okay. <laughs> Not at all. And and the and the my, the reasoning behind saying that is because he's in the Who Needs Him club, um, and and uh, uh, and so therefore any fighter that's got any true ambition that wants to come through, would be game with Deontay Wilder because a man punches too hard, the, the risk of losing far outweighs the rewards. So you'd look for another path, and that's and and that along with some of the things that have been said in regards to, to um, respected members of the boxing fraternity, some of the, some of the things he said, you think, wow. And I mean, I'm talking about the stuff, the accusations to Mark Breland. Um, and, and I'm quite sure he might have peed others off in some of the accusations that he's made. Um, I just think you, you just kind of, you're blackballing yourself. So, so, so that's, that's why I said that. Uh, and let's just see. Let's just see how negotiations go. Let's just see when, when he gets in the ring. Um, just kind of sticking with Deontay Wilder, um, we will talk about obviously Dillian White's rematch with Povetkin, which has now been uh, put yeah. for March the 6th. Um, mm -hmm. But Eddie Hearn has gone on record again saying that if it comes through the <coughs> fight, that is a fight that he would like to make between Dillian White and Deontay Wilder. Uh, and you know what? I saw that and I thought, wow, that'd be a wicked fight. Um, uh, again, so, so for Dylan White, we know that he's a proper road warrior. He'll fight anybody and anybody. For Deontay Wilder, his mission, if he carries on boxing, is to get back to the top. And if doing that, he has to fight um, 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 Dylan White and, he's, and there's a title on the line, I could see it, it really happening. Um, uh, and again, um, uh, I think it's about making the right business move on his part. It's a good business move on on uh, on on Dillian's part because he's more or less proven, boys. You know what? I've made a mistake. I've come back in the mix. I've beaten everybody around you, champions. Give me a shot. Um, and so, so again, uh, as long as he he writes what he classes as the wrong with Povetkin, he reestablishes himself as the man that's uh, uh, been unfairly done to.
Are you convinced that Dillian White wins the rematch with Alexander Povetkin? Totally convinced. I'm, I, d- I don't have a doubt um, because <clears throat> because he made a mistake and underestimated what Povetkin still had left. Uh, and maybe a job was getting too easy. He thought, oh, I'm relaxing here. Now, you know, you get my man once, you won't get him a second time. And I think the way the fight was going, uh, Dylan knows he had the beating of him. Dylan knows he had the youth, the power, the, the, the power, the strength, the speed of him. Um, and, but he just missed out a part of his arsenal and, and got caught with it. He knows the mistake he made. Uh, Povetkin will always be dangerous. Povetkin will always have that. Dylan just has the youth and the energy and the hunger. And Povetkin knows what he can do to, to Dylan, but he also knows what, what Dylan can do to him and how the fight was going. So, so he's either got to jump on him or wait for Dylan to get a little bit tired, weather the storm, and then try and chop him again. Um, and that's the danger. Uh, Dylan's got to think, right, when I've got you hurt, I'm going to keep you hurt. That's how you've got to play it. Bit of a frustrating period for Dylan White, obviously. You know, he was taking a gamble by taking the rematch so soon after what happened at fight camp in August. It was only about three months in between. Mm. Obviously, Povetkin, unfortunately, uh, contracted coronavirus. That was put back till January and now the delay till March. But who do you think that's going to benefit, that delay? That, um, that delay? Who does it benefit? Well, uh, Povetkin, if he really had uh, the, the virus which I don't doubt he did, because when they said he was boxing again, like three weeks later, I thought, he ain't got no virus, because it'll take him a hell of a lot longer to get over that. Because I know the effects of this, it has on your lung capacity. Uh, and so, so that I thought, there's no way Povetkin will get himself into fighting position. You've got to be in the fittest you can be as a human um, in three months. So this has given Povetkin enough time to bask in uh, his success. Given his time, given him time to get over uh, the virus um, physically, um, and so, so of course, he's just given that time for 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 why he's just had to spend his life crafting his 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 talent and getting better. Um, so I hope that in the gym he's had some decent sparring, just a little, uh, so he doesn't get in and say, "I'm feeling rusty." You know, he's got to be able to get out there, get the job done. He's had time to concentrate on, on perfecting his boxing ability. So has Anthony Joshua, so has Tyson Fury, so has all the fighters that have, have, can't do anything apart from train. If they are stupid enough to spend this time just waiting and doing nothing, this is the dumbest thing to do. Boxing's like computers. You've got to stay on top of it. You've got to stay there learning, forever learning. And I'm not, I don't see it mean getting yourself... Uh, battered in the gym so all the damage is done in the gym it, it means working on technique working on movement working on on what works for you and that's how you can spend a year in the gym and not fight and come out and think wow look at Conor Ben and Conor Ben when he's had injuries and he's had time off he's come back a better fighter you see it wow this boy's done well here you know all of a sudden he's using the jab all of a sudden he's using movement all of a sudden he's showing patience so that time off if you use it wisely can be the best thing ever. So on so for Dillian, he's he's now immersed himself in he spends, I don't know if he lives there most of the time in Portugal, but his life is now training. His life is now in the gym. Not the distractions of London, not the distractions of, of, of family and friends. It's in the gym. I like that. It's a commitment you've got to take for a big chunk of your life. You can play outside when when all the fight is done, but he's he's had to commit himself full time for it. Mm. Um, just talking about kind of moving away from uh, that March the sixth card. Um, there's some there's some good fights in this schedule. I think Kelly Avenician, we're praying happens finally. It's the most postponed yeah. fight over the last few years. It's dra- yeah. dragged on for several months, and I think creeping into years now because um, the original fight was that was scheduled for well over a year ago when it was yeah yeah for the European title. <laughs> so that's a, that's a great fight. Obviously, Conor Ben steps up against Sam. April Parker. the twenty, April the tenth. That's it so against uh, uh, Vargas. Yep, yeah, Samuel Vargas. Um, yeah. And uh, there's Josh Warrington in action. Obviously, February mm-hmm. the thirteenth. Lawrence mm-hmm. Poli gets his. World title against Nowaki, yeah. uh, March the twentieth. I think that one is. Uh, yeah, March twentieth. Yeah. Yeah. So the schedule uh, is looking good for the the first kind of quarter of twenty twenty one. Yeah, without a doubt. And obviously, the ones that will stand out for me are are 
are your Connor Benz, are your your, your Lawrence O'Coleys. Uh, I think Lawrence O'Coley, this is this is he's he's not even the finished article, but he'll end up being world champion. Uh, I think he'll end up uh, possibly unifying uh, uh, the cruiserweight division and moving up. Um, and and I say that because it, I say there's still a lot of growing left for him to do, improving left for him to do. So um, uh, against Glowatsky as well, I just think uh, Glowatsky, they don't realise how how powerful a puncher, how big a unit this guy is, uh, but he has a pace, the movement, the speed of a cruiserweight. Um, <clears throat> um, I'd like to see, you know, as time goes on, I'd like to see how we'd fare at heavyweight, but let him just capture and... and uh, and uh, solidify the, the cruiserweight division before that happens. And of course, Conor Ben, he did an interview with you, with you the other day, started speaking Spanish. I went, BAM! He was bad! I thought I went, but he did it cool. Like when I, well, like he was watching, uh, I don't know, some one gangster film. And I thought, yeah, I thought, you know what? That even sounds intimidating. I don't know what you're saying, but it sounds intimidating. So I thought, nah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to learn to do that. But uh, I like him. I like everything about him. And I think, um, just like that, I think there's, 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 there's parts of him that are so untapped. There's parts of him that, that are so underestimated. And, and I like his attitude. I like everything about him. Remember, this young man has left his family in Australia. He's come here, set up home uh, back here in the UK. And he doesn't have to box, uh, but he, he's got a proper chip on his shoulder, which I like. So, you know, you've got a little rich kid that's got a chip on his shoulder. They ain't right, did you know? You don't know how to deal with them because you're thinking, what is it that motivates you? And so for Connor, I just, I'm a massive fan. I and mean, you know what? I am, I'm a massive fan of Josh Kelly. But, and, and I'm thinking when that day comes, I've got I've to gotta, I've gotta stick my flag in and say, right, where I'm going. And I think Connor has a beating of him. I think Kelly is, uh, he, he's, he's, he's got an unbelievable t- talent, but boxing isn't his life. It's not ingrained in him. It's not something that, he, it's a, it's a, it's a hobby. He's, he's, he, you know, clay's box, and then I get on with the rest of his life. Um, and so I think that that depth that Connor has, I think that'll be the thing that pulls him through over Kelly. That's what I think. Johnny, can I just ask you just to go back on them comments so quickly? What, tell me them comments you just said about. So Josh Kelly. So, 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 do you remember Jermaine Taylor? Yes. All right. So, so he loved boxing. Great boxer, but he didn't box boxing. He wasn't in, He didn't watch it. He wasn't interested in it. He'd watch a soap or this that. Kelly's one of them. Kelly's a great boxer. When he does, but you think, how can you be so talented? And boxing's not your, your be all and end all. So, so when I box, and when I know boxers that box, they'll go home. They'll just watch visuals after videos. You talk. You recite history to them. They'll be come back with you. Yeah, yeah. You'll have a conversation of the history of our sport. I gather Josh Kelly's not that guy. Josh Kelly's the kind of guy says, I'm going to box, but anyway, get him with the rest of my life. Which I like, which shows how talented he is. Uh, but I, I actually... Is that assumption of, of Josh Kelly, or do you know this for definite? Is this... I've heard. Okay. That's all right. I'm just asking. Yeah. I've heard. And so, but what I'm saying is, if he Im- immersed himself in it, can you imagine how good this kid could be? Because he is good. He's very good. Uh, and I remember bumping into him. Uh, he's not even turned pro. I was, I was doing an event, uh, and uh, he he rocked up in it. He was a, he was at a table. He had a table. And he said, "Keep an eye on me. I'm going to be world champion." And uh, and he's not even turned professional. And then I've, obviously, I've always followed his career and always been a fan of his. Uh, and, and obviously, Connors as well. Well, Josh Kelly's got a very difficult fight in um, David Evanesian. And obviously, Conor Ben's got his fight with Samuel Vargas. But if they both come through that fight, there's no reason why that fight doesn't happen after that at some point this year. Not at all. Not at all. And I can remember talking to Adam Bull, when Adam Bull actually wants that fight. You know, he, he wants... He, they, they, they're, they're reaching for that fight. And um, I think the sooner the better for both fighters. I think both fighters are still developing, learning and getting better each time you box. These are young guys. Um, and, and for Josh... Uh, um, did he box on the in New York on the on yes. the uh, yeah he boxed on that card he, he had a toughie that night still still came through um, but so 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 he's been he's been tested Connor's been tested when he went as well when he got put down after dig it through and and uh, and the scorecards favoured him uh, so they they both had to learn a lesson in that in the sport 
But I think they're both good fighters. I think they're both improving massively. And I'd love to see a fight between them.